local news and weather from News 8. Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to News 8 at 6 Digital Edition. We're learning more tonight about who may have been behind a slew of car break-ins in Batavia. A duo was charged in connection to the crimes today. Deputies say they found 33-year-old Mitchell Merrill and 26-year-old Haley Merrill in possession of stolen property and credit cards. Those items were allegedly taken from multiple vehicles that were broken into. Both suspects are set to appear in Alexander Town Court tomorrow. Also, a Rochester man has been arrested for allegedly shooting at his girlfriend. This happened shortly before 1.30 this afternoon on Columbia Avenue in the city. Police say the 21-year-old missed and the bullet struck a house. No one was hurt, though, and the incident remains under investigation. A Geneva man is facing serious charges for allegedly abandoning this dog. 51-year-old James Kemp Sr. is charged with animal abandonment. Deputies say yesterday an off-duty lieutenant saw Kemp let this dog out of the car and then he drove off. Deputies tracked Kemp down by his license plate and when he was brought into custody, he allegedly told them he was returning the dog to where he found it a few weeks earlier so the real owner could find it. The dog you see here has been placed up for adoption by the Ontario County Humane Society. Harris Corporation has announced it is merging with L3 Technologies. This is an all stock deal and it makes Harris the sixth largest U.S. defense contractor in history. The combined company will now go by L3 Harris Technologies. Officials tell us they plan to maintain a strong presence in Rochester and expand opportunities for current employees here. The deal is expected to close by mid next year. Well, the streets of downtown Rochester became a sea of pink today as nearly 12,000 people stepped out to make a stand against breast cancer. What a great day. This is the 22nd annual Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk. It's one of the biggest fundraisers for the American Cancer Society in our area. It brings current fighters, survivors, and loved ones together to support prevention and treatment. It impacts all of us, you know, in one way or another, everyone knows a breast cancer person or someone who's survived, thankfully, um, and people know folks that they've lost to the disease, so they're willing to fight in honor of them. This year's walk raised $420,000. All of the funds support free services offered by the American Cancer Society and education for how people can reduce their risk of developing the disease. Of course, the weather uh, held out for that nice walk, oh, and just it beautiful. just got better as the day went on. It absolutely did, Stacey Pension, and I'm loving all the leaves. It's definitely <laughs> fall. Yeah, you're definitely starting to see the change in the sky and in the air. Although it was a chilly start this morning for all of those walkers out there. 38 degrees is where we started off this morning. That's the coldest it has been since May 1st. And the November-like chill will continue off and on really for the foreseeable future. Temperatures are quite chilly off to the west of us. We're talking 30s in the upper Midwest, Midwest and the upper plains. Milder, at least for a day or so. We were in the 60s for today. But where the, all the cold air is, they're actually dealing with winter storm warnings, freeze warnings. We had frost advisories this morning, but I didn't see any widespread frost anywhere. Take a look at radar and satellite. This is the cold front that we'll be watching. You see the snow associated with that front. And I don't have any accumulating snow in the forecast, but I do think we will see flakes over the next week or so. It's been quiet, a nice, beautiful day, but that will be changing. Check out Futurecast, wind out of the south, so we'll have an early low, and then temperatures actually rise. By tomorrow morning, we'll be waking up to a few scattered rain showers. Cold front comes through during the early afternoon, and then you're really going to feel a difference in the temperature, a little bit of lake effect, minor lake effect, rain as we head into Tuesday morning. Now temperature wise again an early low temperature in the 40s and then we actually rise by Monday morning. Monday we're starting off near 50. We'll top out near 60. Cold front comes through and that'll drop our temperatures. 61 degrees was our high temperature on the day 45 overnight tonight. But remember we'll be rising after midnight clear sky to start. Then some showers arrive by tomorrow morning. 62 our high temperature tomorrow. And then we'll be dropping off breezy with scattered showers as that cold front gets ready to move on through. Tuesday, 52 degrees, so much cooler. Wednesday, even cooler. Could even see a few snow showers in the forecast late Wednesday into early Thursday. Friday at this point looks really nice, low 60s. But then another punch of cold air arrives by next weekend with the potential for a few more snow showers. So it is that time of year. Adam, Maureen. Okay, if you say so. 
Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you for watching News 8 at 6 Digital Edition. We'll be on air for the late news. Hope to see you then. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and our apps for both news and weather.